Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to it. 888 Pat Unleashed on Twitter. All weekend long. Right up to this very moment. Got these earworms in my head that I just can't get out. Mm. Gah! Mm-mm. Every. So, uh, there, and there's two rotating. One <laughs> is level 42. Something about you. Because there's something about you. Baby. Thank you for this. Tonight. <laughs> Oh, no. You're just passing it on, aren't you? Yeah, and you're welcome. You're welcome. (laughs) You need to feel my pain. You really do. You really do. And it's my fault. I've been listening to it on Spotify for Mm. some reason. I I don't know why. I'm just really into the song right now. I wasn't. in When it came out in 1985, (laughs) barely tolerated it. But I love it for some reason. And the other one is Invincible by OK Go. You know them, right? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. If you want to... It'd drive me out of my mind. I would highly recommend spending an entire afternoon just watching OK Go videos on YouTube. You will be so, so creative. Yeah. So creative. I think it was you that actually turned me on to that band. Because uh, we saw the the one with OK Go band members on the treadmills. Treadmills, that was their original one, yeah. Yeah. And they've done... Uh, then they did a weightless one on a plane, uh, uh-huh. yeah. which is crazy. Crazy. They've done like worth a look. A road if course. You're interested at all? Um, Great band. What's those uh, uh, Rube, Rube uh, machine? What's it called? You know what I'm talking about. You said it is about, it like the Domino's machine? Yeah, yeah. Thing? Rube, yeah, Rube, I don't know what, what they're called. It called? But I forget. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. Anyway, mm-hmm. yeah. Very creative. Yeah, I've just been uh, out here uh, losing my voice, singing at the top of my lungs this morning. What's the deal with oh. us in music today? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we need it because of the apocalypse. Oh, boy. I don't right. know. But, jeez. <laughs> Wearing out my Spotify on those two songs. And, now, and so now I'm paying for it. I'm paying the price. My wife has gone oh, no. to such an extreme because she can't stand it so much when songs get stuck in her head. She won't listen to anything with lyrics anymore. What? Yeah. All instrumental music. That's all she'll listen to. No. Yeah. Come on that's, now. That's how it goes. You need to get yeah, I can't, aside. I can't do that. I just love it too yeah, much. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right. We've got uh, we got a fabulous show lined up for you, jam-packed with fun and frivolity. Hold on a second. Hold on. You said, uh, I'm about 30 seconds behind on the show mm-hmm. here. You said wearing mm-hmm. out your uh, Spotify. Mm-hmm. Do you ever get in these ruts and you think, oh, boy, that's going to be on my uh, On my list at the, at the end of the year? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Top two. Huh? Definitely. <laughs> anyway, yeah. We I think can... level 42 is going to be there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and several OK Go songs. Yeah, good. Invincible, Here It Goes Again, <laughs> Yeah, A Million Ways, mm-hmm. good stuff. Then yeah. I went back to some tried and true classics like Foreigners, Fool For You Anyway. I've rediscovered that song from their first album, uh, The Eagles, Hotel California. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just watched a Beatles documentary, another Beatles document. This one was pretty old. It was called The Long and Winding Road. Probably never seen that, right? But it's, I think, a four or five part series. Uh, so I've been into their stuff wow. lately. You know, when I met you, were you, I, I didn't th- like them. Yeah, did not like them. I, that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. Complete turnaround on that. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, all right, <laughs> so we got a bingo card. If you obtain bingo during the course of the week, you want to be the first to call triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three to claim your fabulous prizes. Thirty dollars worth of merch from packrayshop.com and. Uh, as if that weren't enough, a dozen Kexi cookies from Kexi.com. So we start in the upper left-hand corner this week with, ouch. Ouch. <laughs> uh, imprecise language. Some kind of reference yeah, for that, me that's, on that? Uh, imprecise KJP language. KJP used to do that, mm. and I think you would mock her for that, okay. if I'm not mistaken. Uh, when I say, oh, no, no, you the, got Obama. Me. That was Obama. Imprecise language in the... Was the it? Israel thing. Remember that? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. So you got me. Uh-huh. You got me. Uh, Jeffy calls Chris a gate guard. <laughs> Thanks for your service guarding the gate. Oh. Uh, Biden's approval rating. President Biden's <laughs> approval rating ranks right up there with jock itch. Okay. <laughs> Senator Kennedy, mm-hmm. always great. Keith says, Niner. That's a Tommy Boy reference. Jeffy, subscribe. (laughs) Don't freeload. (laughs) Uh, Then we've got uh, Al Sharpton. Mm -hmm. Why was traffic problems email sent? Mm -hmm. 
I do think I do. I, I think you've got that one. If not, you can easily recreate it. it. It sounds exactly the same, whether it's the recording or live. Yeah, well. <laughs> Why there we was go. traffic problems email said. said. <laughs> uh, get that kid looked at. <laughs> Manawa ni Oh, boy. Uh, wrecked him. Darn near killed him. <laughs> Smoking crack and drinking vodka. Oh, yeah. Smoking crack and drinking vodka exclusively. Uh huh. Hunter. I'm not your trained monkey. You should clap. Oh, yeah. That's a Joe yeah. Biden clip. A Joe Biden. Uh, we get yeah. that. With several people have done that. Clap, you stupid bastard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, J- uh, Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush. Was the original Very famous clap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was the end of his campaign. Seems to be perfectly acceptable now because Biden keeps doing it. Like, he, he doesn't care. He's got no shame. Uh, mostly peaceful. Mm-hmm. We are not a democracy. Mm. That's almost a free square. Uh, a Pat Giod is referenced. Bill Maher. It's not that I've gotten old. It's that your ideas are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Keith with... Uh, That's comedy gold. Uh, Jeffy smokes a fake invisible cigarette. Inshallah. Inshallah. Oh, gosh. Okay. Cornyn. Wow, that was weird. Uh, Keith. Of sorts. <laughs> Usually it has something to do with UK. Something. Uh, we do not tolerate fat shaming oh, on this show. Yeah. Uh, Chris mentions his chickens. <laughs> and then America was never that great. We're not going to make America great again. It was never that great. God. Andrew Cuomo. Wow. Wow. Bro. Uh, thank you, leftists, bro, bro. for uh, your absolute disdain for this nation. That continues. It's just, uh, it's great, isn't it? It's, re- it's very inspiring. Yeah, that bingo card is pinned to the top of Pat Unleashed on Twitter, by the way, if you would like to go and find that. I would. I would like to go find it. Well, we'll wait while you do that. Yeah, all right. Um, well, you're going to wait a while, because oh, well. I don't even have Twitter available on this laptop, so well, I hold on. To, have to go get my What's iPad. Story? <laughs> What's the story on that uh, laptop? Was it made in 1982? Yes. Yes. Came out in 1982. Right along with the Commodore 64, I believe. They came out about the same time. <laughs> that, so, uh, that song you were singing. Yeah, it's just was a prior single. to that. It was just released. Just prior to that. <laughs> oh, boy. Do you even know that song? Something yeah. About You? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not so bad. We're only human after See. all. Yeah. Oh, now, now there you you're, go. Now you're, you're going to have it. Yeah. You're going to have welcome. it in your head. <laughs> I'd play it for you, but then we'd have to shut down the show because uh, that's very <laughs> sensitive right now. That and so many other things. Yeah. Uh, all right. Four Israeli hostages were rescued over the weekend. Awesome. Love that. I love the fact that they actually did it. Took a long time. Mm-hmm. They said they were planning this for months. <sighs> But they did pull off a rescue of of four of the hostages. Um, So there's only 120 left. And they don't don't really know if they're even alive at this point. So over eight months now, it's been. Yeah. The rescued hostages are Noah Argamani, 25 years old. Almeg Meyer Jan, who's 21. Andre Andre Kozlov, 27. And Shlomi Ziv, who's 40. Um, they were among those kidnapped by Hamas, of course, during the Nova Music Festival on October 7th. They were transferred to the Sheba Tel Hoshomer Medical Center in Tel Aviv, where authorities say they're in pretty good medical condition. Yeah, it was good seeing the reuniting going on there in the hospital. Yeah. One of them was really, really a tragic story because that day, shortly before they were rescued, uh, one of the hostages' fathers died from a heart attack. Just really sad. Been waiting, hoping, you know, kind of pushing the Israeli government to do something for eight months. And then on the day he is rescued, has a heart attack and dies. It's really tragic. Apparently, U.S. intelligence to uh, provide some of the information they needed to get the job done. One of the Israeli soldiers was killed uh, in during the rescue operations. Said they were under really heavy fire. Yeah, yeah. A lot of uh, international condemnation of the apparent mass casualties uh, there. Well, you know what? Don't take hostages. That's right. You don't want casualties. Don't take hostages. Um, They claim 210 mm -hmm. Palestinians were killed. Get out of here. 
It's just a flat out lie. It's from the Gaza Ministry of Health, yes. which is Hamas. <laughs> so, yeah, but that's a good 400 point. 400 I mean, more injured. Uh, zero people around hostages would be dead if zero hostages had been taken in the first place. Right. But yeah, and one of the, uh, uh, Noah, she was in the uh, house of a cameraman for Al Jazeera. Huh. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. Jeez. I, ah. Uh, yeah. It's it's agonizing. And uh, the, further, Hamas claims many of them were women and children. I really just don't believe it. I don't believe it. I mean, certainly some were killed. Hopefully, Hamas soldiers were killed uh, during the rescue operation. But again, don't take them. What are you doing with the prisoners? Why do you have them? <laughs> ah, it's It's madness. Yeah. That you even have to bring that up. That, hey, you know this was brought on by October 7th, right? That part is completely forgotten exactly. by these crazy buffoons. Also, over the weekend, a pro-Hamas crowd gathered outside the White House. Here's what that looked like. Hey, Joe Biden, you're a sellout! Pack your bags and get the hell out! Pack no, your bags cute. and get the hell out. Okay, cute. I'm good with that. Easy. Sell out, get the hell out. I agree with that part. Yeah. They demand a ceasefire. Biden, Biden, what do you say? How many kids? How many kids killed today? Okay. I'm pretty sure the count. Uh, let me carry that one. Uh, is zero, and that's not because it's so early. I, th- I think it was the same count as yesterday. <laughs> I mean, come on. Oh man. Mm, we should. Uh... We should adopt that chant uh, next pro-life yeah. in front of the White House. It's not true. Wow. Yeah, that they don't care about that at all. And by the way, it was over a million last year alone. Oof. Over a million. And the crowd vandalized statues at Lafayette Square. Yeah. And uh, Oh, at, man. At one point, oh, yeah, they did this to every, every mm. statue. Animals. It was like this. And there was like one... Park ranger guy. You think when you sign up to be a park ranger, you're not going to have to deal with uh, pro-terrorist organizations, but here he was, and he was standing there, and they were just throwing (laughs) stuff at him, and he was just standing in front of it, Mm. unable to do anything. And then one time, they tried to arrest somebody climbing on a statue, and the crowd intervened, and they were like, okay, you know what? We're just going to let you just do what you want to do. They held up a bloody mask of Joe Biden's head. Very peaceful. (laughs) <laughs> you know, they just want peace. That's all. <laughs> uh, That's great. It's mostly peaceful. There it is. These demonstrators. Just mostly peaceful. Yes, yeah, sure. A few people will have to be decapitated along the way. We'll have to burn down some buildings and uh, kill some other civilians. And, you know, who knows how many people will have to kill along the way. But it's mostly peaceful. Okay? The vast majority of people in this country will not die from this. I guess that's the logic there. Meanwhile, Joe Biden was still over in France. Mm-hmm. He's been there a while, right? Wow. Yeah, he might be back now. This was Friday and Saturday. Still stuff. doing D-Day related events. Mm-hmm. Uh, he thinks he may be the son of the American Revolution. He might be. We'll have to find out. Huh. I just think you got to. Somebody's got to do his homework for him, though. <clears throat> okay. You know, uh, one of the things has been a legend in my family. Legend. <laughs> my middle name is Robinet. Robinet. And allegedly, Robinette. I've, I've, nice I've try. been told by my grandfather yeah, he was told. that this was established. I've not found it yet. Maybe someone could help me. <laughs> that I'm a son of the American Revolution. You're a son of something. Because <laughs> Robinette came over with Lafayette and never went home. <laughs> never went home. Oh. He stayed in the United States. So oh, that makes good. me a son of the American Revolution. Listen to this. And, uh, but, uh, Get out of here. I, I haven't been able to establish that yet, so... Maybe one of your genealogists can figure it out for me. No, thanks. (laughs) No, thanks. Uh, We're good. You figure it out, old man. Who's our great listener who does our genealogy? She signed it for like way back. Yeah, Donna. Uh, Maybe Donna could pick that up. (laughs) He just uh, threw the ball. Maybe she catches it and runs with it. I don't know. For him, I don't think Donna's going to do that. But uh, let me just thank you, Donna, for taking our genealogy back to, I think, uh, Charlemagne. So... (laughs) Seriously. Like it was literally like, seriously. about Charlemagne. Don, yeah. Donna's a sweetheart. Uh, uh, and she's uh, been battling cancer. But she's, oh, no, uh, really? She's doing okay. She's uh, 
Doing okay right now. All right. Our thoughts and prayers mm-hmm. with her. Um, so now he's the son of a um, American <laughs> Revolution. Well, is the first time you've ever heard him say Robin Robinet? Yeah, I've never heard that before. I, I think that's a bogus, bogus pronunciation. Everything. But he's pandering to French people. Everything about this man is bogus. He's in his French for so this country. All of a sudden, it's not Joe Robinet Biden. It's Joe Robinet. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Thank you for that. And he was asked about funding for Ukraine, not Iraq. <laughs> this is so wild. Ukraine. <laughs> the idea that we become semi-isolationists now, which some are talking about. Mm. I mean, the idea we had to wait all those months just to get the money for Iraq and we, because we're Oops. waiting. I mean, it's just, it just, it's not who we are. It's not, it's not who America is. Are, are we funding Iraq now again? Probably. Is that hmm. yeah, probably. okay? What aren't we funding? All right. He well, might be right. He might be right. Maybe that's something we just didn't know about, and he let the cat out of the bag accidentally. <laughs> We're funding so many nations that he can't keep them all straight. That's fair. God, jeez. In Iraq, I mean, the guy cannot. He cannot get things right. Mm-mm. Doesn't matter what it is. Mm-mm. Used to be numbers that were, you know, always going to trip him up. It's always something that trips him up. Always. And of course, while visiting the grave sites of American soldiers who died at Normandy. We knew it was coming. Brought up his own family. How does it feel to be here, sir? You know, I don't want I don't want to make this personal, but ah! since when I show up pause it for a sec. I can't. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> I want to make this personal. Yeah. What do you mean? You do it every every single time. That's all you do. If you don't want to make it personal about you, how about don't then? Don't make it about you. He can't not do it. Yeah, though. and this is a two can This is a two for. Okay, this great. Is, uh... All right, start start at the beginning. I'll probably interrupt him again. We may uh-huh. have to go through this about thirty times. Okay, here it is. You know, I don't want I don't want to make this personal. Then but... don't. Every time I show up at a military site mm-hmm. where veterans are buried, huh? it uh, brings back memories of hearing my Uncle Bosey. grandfather and my mother talk about the loss of Unreal. their son and brother yeah. in the South Pacific. And? Yeah. and uh, Who else? Got eaten by cannibals. And Bo. Oh, and Bo. And his son Bo. In Iraq. Mm-hmm. No. Did he say he died? In, uh, play the last five seconds or so. Uh... <laughs> Surprised we didn't get a Trump uh, lie. Yeah, I know. I know. Really true. Really true. Can you run that back about five seconds? In the South Pacific. Yeah. And I think about my son, Bo, after he was in Iraq. After. And this guy's a liar. Unintelligible. Yeah, in Iraq. After he was in Iraq. (laughs) That's so that you can't say, Mm -hmm. he didn't die in Iraq. That's what he's trying to get across, though. That he sacrificed his life. In Iraq. <laughs> it's incredible. It's incredible. The guy is so predictable, though. Uh, uh, we'll get into more We've uh, if we can handle it <laughs> coming up. But, you know, elections are coming up here. Uh, and things are going to get even crazier than they already are, especially when it comes to freedom of speech and how hypocritical the left is when it comes to it. To them, it's okay to chant from the river to the sea. But, uh, you know, you call our border crisis an invasion and they want to put you in prison. We already know the big tech is doing everything in their power to suppress the truth. That's why we are here. The Blaze Media. We saw this coming. Certainly Glenn did. And uh, it's exactly why we exist. Blaze TV and Blaze News is a place where I can speak freely with no repercussions. It's a place where viewers can be a part of the solution and ensure that they can't cut us off from each other. Please consider supporting Blaze Media, where our mission is to set fire to the lies the left is trying to jam down your throat every single day. Get the full show plus our overtime content by going to blazetv.com. Subscribe today. Use the promo code PAT. Get 20 bucks off your subscription. That's blazetv.com to get the full show plus overtime and everybody else's shows and overtimes and all the Glenn specials. You're going to love it. And, uh, of course, on on the website, uh, blaze.com, 
You'll also get the, you know, the locked stories that are there, and there's some really excellent content there. Uh, BlazeTV.com, promo code PAT to, for 20 bucks off. Do it today. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. Uh, so... All last week, we had this hot mic moment from Senator Jody Ernst, but we didn't have a really good place to play Yeah, we it. didn't. We didn't. We never got to it. <laughs> but since mm. Joe Biden brought up Uncle Bosey, uh, <laughs> okay, thought we would go ahead and play uh, mm. uh, Jody Ernst's hot mic moment here. Bottom line: never trust a man whose uncle was eaten by cannibals. <laughs> Bottom line: never trust a man whose uncle was eaten by cannibals. <laughs> I don't know what That's preceded great. that, but I liked it. <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah. That's good stuff. I didn't expect that from Jody Ernst. <laughs> yeah, good for her. Yeah. That's just uh, good, clean fun right there. <laughs> <laughs> and by the, pe- what, the, by the way, the people of New Guinea, it was New Guinea, right? Yep. Uh, uh, yeah. Did not appreciate that comment uh-uh. at all. Uh, they took serious exception to it and... Uh, want you to know that nobody's relatives were being eaten by cannibals in New Guinea. In New Guinea. So by the way, one of the things rest easy. we haven't mentioned is uh, part of the massive embarrassment that was Joe Biden in France from start to finish was uh, he gave his speech above the cliffs there <coughs> mm-hmm. and uh, making the rounds all weekend was just how it, uh, they, they spliced it up. It was a complete ripoff of Ronald Reagan's 40th anniversary speech. Really? Uh, for D-Day. Oh, wow. And wow, just plagiarize. I mean, that's all this guy has done his entire career. Yeah, well, plagiarize and he's been caught multiple times. Mm-hmm. He's admitted to it. Uh, back in 88, he got caught red-handed. Yeah. And he even went on a talk show. Remember this? We played this a while ago. He even went on a talk show and joked about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that forced him to... See, this is the difference between 80s America and 2024 America is that you used to could have this this level of shame, and that's yeah. what compelled him to drop out of the 88 race for president. Right. Today, right. he is president. Yeah. <sighs> and it's fine with everybody. Yeah. Make stuff up all the time, and he does. <sighs> <laughs> it's painful, man. Now, the latest is he's a son of a bi- uh, 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 an American uh, founder. Yeah, I heard about that. Mm-hmm. Robinet. <laughs> yes. Right? Came over with Lafayette. Yeah. Just never went back. Never <laughs> went back. <laughs> to our regret. That's incredible. I mean, the guy's tied into absolutely everything. <laughs> everything and everyone. Yep. Meanwhile, back in the U.S., Donald Trump was holding a rally where he referenced last week's executive order from Joe Biden. Uh-huh. Last week, Crooked Joe signed an executive order. That is pro-invasion, pro-child trafficking, pro-woman trafficking, pro-human trafficking, and pro-drug dealers. It's a pro-drug dealer bill. It's weak. It's ineffective. It's bullshit what he signed. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, he got right to it. Yeah, he did. That's what we have. (laughs) A big pile of you-know-what. It's white people love him. Mm-hmm. Because he just speaks it the way it is. So. Yeah, and nearly two... This is a CBS poll. Nearly two-thirds of voters support President Trump's proposal for mass deportations of illegal aliens. Wow, it's up to two-thirds now? That's incredible. Yeah. And that is registered voters. Yeah. Wow. wow. Two-thirds of Americans can't agree on anything. No, That's what I was saying. Anything. <laughs> yeah. So that includes, just so you know, you're aware if you haven't done the math, that includes a lot of Democrats. Yeah. Because you can't get to two thirds with just Republicans. Mm-hmm. You can get to a third, but you can't get to two thirds. That's pretty impressive. Americans are just waking up to this problem, and again, uh, uh, because in large me- measure, what uh, what Greg Abbott did, yep. bussing illegals up to New York, and by the way, only a fraction of those. Uh, have been bussed in from Texas due to Greg Abbott's policies and, and Ron DeSantis in Florida. A lot of that happened just because Biden has been shipping illegals all over the nation as well. That goes unspoken sometimes, mm-hmm. but he's in part responsible for a lot of that. Sure is. I mean, that's something that started under Obama. Yeah. So that woke up. That woke up the Democrats in the Northeast. 
And uh, it's been good. I mean, at least as far as immigration immigration is concerned, it's fantastic that they can feel the pain of the border states. Also, DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas spoke about the impact of the executive order and oh, yeah. what it's having. This is the impeached the guy, right? Yeah, the okay. impeached Alejandro. This has been in place for five days now. What has the impact been? How many oh, migrants have been turned away between Millions. those ports of entry? <laughs> Martha, we're at a very early stage. Implementation, uh-huh. as you noted, has just begun. Just begun. Uh, only our just begun. intent is to really change the risk calculus uh-huh. of individuals before they the leave risk their calculus. countries of origin okay. and incentivize them mm-hmm. to use the lawful pathways that we okay. have made available to them mm. and keep them out of the hands of exploitative smugglers. It's early. <laughs> the signs are positive. Our personnel have done an extraordinary job in implementing a very big shift in how we operate on the southern border. <laughs> it's, it's, it's done nothing is what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's early. I mean, it is, but still, he can't cite any numbers yeah. on that. And what was he saying? And, and God bless the Border Patrol agents. Uh, absolutely. I think in this report that we've got uh, from, uh, what's his name? Bill Malugan. I can never remember how to pronounce his name from Fox News. He was at the border. I think it's San Diego sector. And he was like, yeah, uh, there's been no change here. And he, <laughs> and he filed this report. And, and, and as I was talking about the agents there, this one agent is, in, is trying to corral a group of 140 illegals at one time. Watch this. Jeez. Absolutely nothing has changed down here as a result of this executive order. We continue to see mass crossings without any resistance whatsoever. We continue to see mass releases, and we continue to see Border Patrol completely outmanned. Take a look at this video. We shot this late yesterday afternoon right here in Hakumba. This is what Border Patrol has to deal with out here. you got one wow. single agent who has to try to corral this huge group of 150 people oh. from all around the planet who crossed illegally. They'd been waiting there for Border Patrol to pick them up for five hours. They were getting impatient. You got language barriers. People from China, from Turkey, from Mauritania, from the Middle East. There's no translators out there. Where's that? They can't process all these people and patrol the border at the same time. Why? They need more manpower. And we talked to a handful of these migrants. Take a listen. Okay. From Egypt. From Egypt? Yes. Oh, All nice. from Egypt? Yeah, yeah. group. From Egypt. Egypt. Good America. Egypt. America good. Good America? America good. good. Yeah? Good. Yeah? Good. Well, why'd you come to America? Because it's good. Uh, good America. And uh, business and uh, business. the group. You want to work? Job? Work, yeah. Job. Yeah, work, yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. And group to bring their families. Look job. at their... Yeah. America good. Wives America. and children America. there. Good. America good. Good. America good. Vietnam. What else do you need? Vietnam. All from China? Yeah. Okay, Gosh, good, us. good, good, good. What else do you need? The guy says twice, America good. And then he gives a We're thumbs done. up. America good. We're done here. If that's your background <laughs> check right there. America good. <laughs> Help us. What more do you want? Well, um, here we go. Uh, here's a fun stat. Holy 78% God. of special interest aliens, illegals from, those are illegals uh, from countries posing national security and terrorist threats, have been released by the Biden administration since October 1st. America good. Yep. Yep. <laughs> President bad, but America good. I tell you. Oh. Uh, the Washington Examiner obtained a, a memo that the border, border Patrol agents were given by Biden uh, officials, which uh, comes immediately after the con- incredibly weak executive order he signed last week. Um, but... Numerous officials, elected leaders, and security experts have warned that Biden's executive order solves nothing and is little more than window dressing. So the instructions that Border Patrol agents were given contradicts what Biden administration officials told reporters in a call on Tuesday uh, that what would be the case for illegals from the Eastern Hemisphere countries who traveled through multiple countries without seeking asylum in order to reach the U.S., I mean, this is going on every day, all day. And again, that executive order he signed, nothing but window dressing. (laughs) That's all it is. It's not doing a single thing. 888-933-93. More Pat Gray Unleashed. Coming up. Gray Unleashed. And 
in some tweets. Megasota Mikey. Mr. Pat, I was a little late tuning in today, and I heard you say level 42. Now, were you referring to the rock band or President Cadaver's level of dementia? Oh, no. Both. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was both. Okay. Uh, glad to catch up on that. Sarah, the band, uh, that moron Biden can't help but make every opportunity to make every situation about himself. He's the most self-absorbed, narcissistic piece of crap. Mm. Indeed. So who do you think? Yeah. Uh, Indeed. Who's more narcissistic? Biden or Obama? No, I think Biden. I mean, that's that's saying something. Yep. But I think yeah. it's Biden. You know, uh, Obama didn't make everything about him. He didn't. He wasn't yeah. standing yeah. there yeah. with, yeah. you know, families of war dead yeah. and trying to make his pain their pain. That's true. Uh, man. I mean, he loved himself, but you're right. He did. Yeah. yeah. Biden, definitely. Stand up, Chuck. Uh, new poll shows that three thirds of illegal immigrants do not want mass deportations of illegal immigrants. Oh, <laughs> so okay. three out of every three want to stay, but just the three. It's America, not four out of three. Look at this, though. This, this uh-huh. is it right here. America, good. That's your background check. It's a powerful well, one. Okay, if they, they wouldn't say, say that if they right. met us harm. Well, that's the thing. They, right. They use it to the Border Patrol agent's discretion if they say, America good! But if they give you the thumbs up, you're in, for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. No Mm -hmm. gray area there. If you say, America good, and it's a period rather than an exclamation mark, you're out. You're out. Sorry. We gotta gotta send you back. Gotta seem excited. Send back them. It's like a bingo winner. If they call and say, bingo. Right, right. Try again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think you get multiple attempts uh, on the border. If you say America good, they go, "Uh, can you try again, please? Oh, America good! All right, right we like like your tone now. Uh, Why are New York City hotel rooms (laughs) so expensive right now? I think we just barely touched on this last week, but the average hotel rate in the city right now is $301 a night. $301 per night. Now, Average. New York's always been expensive, mm-hmm. but this is crazy. Yeah. A major reason, one out of every five hotel rooms and one out of every five hotels is now a shelter. Hmm. Boy, and we... So 20% of hotel space being taken up by illegal aliens. And just this past weekend, <sighs> I saw Man. we've got illegal alien... Uh, in, and we've seen other th- reports like this, gang activity... There's a, a robbery gang from Venezuela that's uh, uh, wreaking havoc throughout New York City. We've got mm-hmm. a sex trafficking gang uh, in Louisiana. Uh, there's a, I mean, there's every town in America. And you're America. saying what? That's suboptimal? Is I'm, that what you're alleging here? I'm saying these individuals may have entered the country mm-hmm. without giving us a thumbs up and oh, saying wow, America good with an exclamation mark. <laughs> I hate that. They may really? have snuck in before that policy went into effect. Wow, okay. I just, I mean, the, you are importing the third world. For sure. This government. And yeah. so with the third world comes third world problems. And we're seeing that. Here we are. We're seeing that. Um, all right. Back to Trump's weekend rally. To give you a little hope, he uh, actually addressed taxing tips in the service industry. I like this. Check this out. So this is the first time... I've said this, and for those hotel workers and people that get tips, you're going to be very happy. (laughs) Because when I get to office, we are going to not charge taxes on tips. People making tips. Yeah! Yeah! All right. (laughs) We're not going to do it. And we're going to do that right away. First thing in office, because it's been a point of contention for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. First thing. And (laughs) you do a great job of service. You take care of people. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be something that really is deserved. More importantly, popular or unpopular. I do some unpopular things, too, if it's right for the country. I do what's right. But so those people that have jobs in restaurants, whatever the job may be, a tipping job, uh, mm-hmm. we're not going after for taxes anymore. This will be ended. <laughs> okay, a couple of thoughts there. All right. He's in Las Vegas. Yeah. So he's definitely playing to yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. a sector there. A little and, bit of pandering going on there. but And uh, any el- el- uh, elimination of a tax mm-hmm. is a good yes, thing. That's good. That's good. Um, I'm all for it. <laughs> but is that the priority? Is that the first thing, though? Yeah, no. And I think the no. people that receive the tips, they're like, oh, we were supposed to pay taxes on those? 
My bad. <laughs> my bad. I haven't even been reporting those, so. Yeah, that hmm. sucks. I mean, I work my butt <laughs> off at the restaurant down at the casino around the clock, and nobody ever tips me a cent. Mm-hmm. Sorry, IRS. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Stingy people, bad economy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they don't understand that I'm one of the people you should be tipping. Because, I yeah, never seen a tip, ever. <laughs> uh, all right, so he addressed that. He also discussed what should happen to drug dealers <laughs> in the United so States. weird. <laughs> but if you went with the death penalty, you would have no drug problem in this country. <laughs> Instant, if it was a meaningful, if it was a meaningful, not a trial that lasts 400 years. <laughs> Like China, I was with President Xi. Oh, I no. said, do you have a drug problem? No. He didn't even know what I was talking about. He's got 1.4 billion people. I said, do uh, you have a drug problem? He goes, no drug problem. I said, how do you do that? Essentially, he said the death penalty. No. We catch, they call it wow. quick trial. They have a trial, yeah. and it's quick. <laughs> I hope that's not a priority, bro. <laughs> death penalty for drug dealers. Okay. Um, hmm. no. interesting. Oh, it's interesting. a quick trial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in China, they can do that kind of stuff. They don't have the judicial system we have, the constitution we have. Yeah, that's problematic there. <laughs> uh, Did you just sell weed off of his head? <laughs> no. Wow. I don't. Uh, okay, we are so uh, Pavlov's dog trained now. When we hear someone say, I was with President Xi. Oh, no. <laughs> No, not that story. Oh, it's not Biden talking. Okay, good. Were you on the Tibetan Plateau? I know. Uh, <laughs> did you travel 17,000 miles with him? I'm going to ask President Trump to maybe don't seek the death penalty for drug dealers. Just, just Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, huh. I'm hoping he, he relaxes <laughs> that policy. At least he didn't say it was day one priority, like the not taxing tips. What's a Central American country? That, didn't they just... You know, who's the guy who really clamped down? Oh, El Salvador? Yeah, it's El Salvador, Haley? right? Yeah. Bukele yeah. is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, even if you he suspected you were a drug dealer. I mean, they've gone from one of the most dangerous nations mm-hmm. on earth to one of the safest <laughs> practically overnight because he really put his foot down. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were arresting everybody. So, I don't know if that's what we want. You know, maybe a happy medium somewhere along the way. I don't know. He had a long sit down with Dr. Phil last week. Uh, Somebody sent us a clip. It's not getting a lot of attention, but check this out. Why is nobody talking about this part right here, the interview with Dr. Phil? Y'all watch this. Look at this map. I, I did a show about this. The red is where Chinese government has funded buying major farmland. Yeah. And then superimposed on that are mm-hmm. some of our most strategic military bases. Yeah. And, and you can see there's, Surrounding. there's Dugway Proving Ground. That's military equipment, biological, mm-hmm. chemical weapons. They're surrounding it. Utah Test Training Range, the largest supersonic authorized restricted airspace in the United States. Whiteman Air Force Base, B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber Base, missile drone operations. MQ-9 Reaper, Global Strike Command 3, Fort Liberty, uh, Airborne Special Operations Forces, Rapid Deployment. We've allowed them to come in and buy up agricultural land, wind farms, no wind, no blades on some of the towers, <laughs> but they're surrounding our, uh, our military bases. Right. We've allowed that to take place. Wow, how stupid are we? Seriously. Seriously. Mm-hmm. Good on Dr. Phil, man. Yeah. My goodness. I mean, that's the last place I would I would expect that kind of information to come from. But good for him yeah. for digging that up. That's amazing. Jeez. That's and you're talking to the right guy about it. I you know, he's got a thing about China, so hopefully that will spark something in him. When he gets into office, something needs to be done about that. Wow, that's frightening. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let me tell you about preborn. You know how people love puppies. We all do, right? They're sweet. They're cuddly. Uh, but can you imagine if we were talking about aborting puppies, sucking them out of their mother's womb, and uh, killing them before their birth? Wouldn't there be some kind of outrage? Yeah. I mean, puppies. We're doing that to humans. 
to the tune of over a million last year alone. Preborn is the nation's leader in protecting the life of the unborn. Uh, by introducing babies to their mothers through an ultrasound, a baby's life, uh, their chance at having a life, doubles. That's why Preborn and their network of clinics offer free ultrasounds to women with unplanned pregnancies in the highest abortion areas of the country. It doubles the chances again, and it just shows the woman what really is going on inside of them. And it makes a huge difference. If you can donate, it's just $28 to provide an ultrasound uh, for a woman. If you could afford that, that'd be awesome. If you could afford $144, that's five ultrasounds for five different women. If you can contribute anything, um, it's greatly appreciated. Just dial pound 250 and say the keyword baby or go to preborn.com slash pat. That's pound 250 keyword baby or preborn.com slash pat. And then we come to just the most wonderful topic, the biggest existential threat we face, other than, of course, white supremacy, mm. and that's climate change. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we're tackling that today um, because the UN, the head of the UN discussed climate change last week. Well, finally. It's, finally. I, I, we yeah. haven't had enough climate change talk in a while. When are we going to have the conversation? Yeah. A lot like racism. We won't have that conversation. Let's have it now, and maybe this will get the ball rolling. Huh. And humanity is just one small blip on the radar. The radar. But like the meteors that wiped out Meteor. the dinosaurs, That's not true. we are having an outsized <laughs> impact. Right. In the case of climate, we are not... Nope. The dinosaurs. We're not no. dinosaurs. We are the meteor. Oh, uh, wow. Yes. We are not That's only big, in bro. danger, uh -huh. we are we the are. danger. We are the danger, but we are also we are the, the world. solution. We are the danger. The solution, oh, and the so solution. So, dear friends, okay. yeah. Don't give up. we Beautiful. are at the moment of truth. Truth. Okay, listen to this. The truth is, yes. almost 10 years truth. since the Paris Agreement was adopted, uh -huh. Uh -huh. The target of limiting long-term global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius mm. is hanging by a thread. It's oh. hanging. It's hanging the by is, a thread. The world is spewing emissions so fast emissions. that by 2030, right, a far higher temperature rise will Pause be for just a second. When is 2030? Oh, 2030 that? is when. Well, I'm unfamiliar oh. with that year. Oh, okay, that's fair. Uh -huh. I, I was. I thought. I 2030. Was alone. I thought I was alone. I'm glad no. to see. I didn't no, want to say anything. No, there's a couple of us who don't I'm understand just, 2030. I was embarrassed to bring it up, and now you know you've given me uh, a sense of. Well, boldness. You know, I have no shame. You're right. Right. So, so hold on. I don't mind. I, also, what what are we hanging by? A shred? We're hanging by, by a, a shred. By a shred. <laughs> <laughs> this guy deserves to be mocked. But see, I can't take it. But but listen oh to what he's gosh. about to say. Okay, I can't by wait. By 2030. By 2030. We're so screwed, it won't even matter. So look, All if right. we can just hold them back for another six years, then we can do whatever the hell then we want after 2030, and they'll leave us alone because by then it's too late. Yeah. Celsius, Celsius is hanging by a shred. By a shred. Wait, Sh pause. The okay. truth is <laughs> it's hanging by a shred. <laughs> <laughs> I don't okay, know if this is the... I think there's shred in there, but are what's the, the other word that's being uh, Are these the takeaways combined? that he was hoping we'd get uh, out of this clip? <laughs> it's, yes! He wants us to know it's hanging by a shred. Global warning to 1.5 <laughs> degrees Celsius is hanging by a shred. By a shred. The truth is... <laughs> there's a truth. Pause the it. Is okay, so true. I guess that's shred and breath. Is it hanging by a shred? A shred and a breath. See, look, it's bad enough when That's you mix your go. metaphors. <laughs> I mean, it's another when you can't even <laughs> pronounce your mixed metaphor. <laughs> All right. This is so Maybe we can get through the rest. He's hanging by a thread. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, yeah, the Here's world the is truth. spewing emissions so fast. Yeah, that so by 2030... Uh -huh. A far higher temperature rise would be all but guaranteed. All yes. but guaranteed. Okay. Okay. And what does that mean? Then We're they'll all leave us die. alone. We're all going to die. People are suffering. People are dying. Yeah. Thank you for that. What is she doing these oh, days? Oh, man. I don't even want to know. 
So there you go. If we look by 2030, <sighs> right? Whatever year that is. Yeah. That's when we're home free and they'll leave us alone because by then they'll be like, oh, well, we So try. we might have a month to 2030 <laughs> or we might have 100 years. I don't know. But mm. if we can just hold out till 2030. So he's from the okay. UN. So that must be a metric. Thing. And you know, the fa- they will they'll completely forget that this was ever said. Mm-hmm. But when we tell them in 2030, you already told us it's too late. So get off us. <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> it's just, it's not going to work. Ugh. <sighs> Terrible. Oh my gosh. Leave us alone then. Yeah. So look, yeah, just, they won't. just hold out mm-hmm. another few years, six mm-hmm. years, mm-hmm. and then maybe they'll shut the hell up finally. I wish. I wish that were possible. <clears throat> uh, you know, but they always have it both ways. You know, they tell us it's too late. In fact, they've said on several occasions, it's already too late. Uh huh. And yet, they're still babbling. Yep. Cool. Yep. Love it. Same thing will happen in 2030. <laughs> and uh, we'll tell them, hey, well, wait, we were told by the head of the UN, it's too late now, so get off us. Yeah, there was a time when it was hanging by a shreth. <laughs> right. But now that time is <laughs> The time has passed. passed. All right, the shreth broke, and you know, we tumbled to the earth. What's that guy's name? Can we just call That's him? a really good question. Let's call him Boutros Boutros Gali. <laughs> okay. Just yes. because I can remember that. Yes. Everybody what, can. What is his name? A man so nice they named him twice. Boutros Boutros Gali. What is this guy's name? I can't even remember. Uh, Head of the UN. How hey. tough can that be to find? Oh, uh, there it was. Hang on. It's, uh, wait, hold on. Oh, sorry. Okay. I can pronounce Antonio Guterres. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Antonio I was, Guterres. I was mixing up his name with the uh, WHO guy. That guy. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Antonio Guterres. Okay. Shreth. Hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it's amazing, though, that we don't, we're not more familiar. He hasn't been uh-uh. hitting the news. We there we haven't played a lot of clips from him. Secretary General. Yeah, he's kind of been uh, below the radar for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, which is nice. He should stay below the radar. <laughs> Yeah, that global warming stuff is yeah. just intolerable. He's from Portugal. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. All right. 888 900 uh, We will continue to make the apocalypse fun just around the corner here. It's not that I've gotten old, it's that your ideas are Pat stupid. Gray. Unleashed. Pat Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Welcome. Great to have you with us. 888 Pat Unleashed on Twitter, where... Uh, Tom Karnak tweets, why do we need a change in border policy when the border is secure? Good question. All right. From Dirty Mule, uh, Mauritania. <laughs> That's right next to Gohomatania. Oh, is it really? I didn't know that. That's cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> DMX DM, I'm not selling APR coffee anymore. I send you coffee and you send me tips. <laughs> uh, Mandalorian Patriot 2. Can we get Vice President, Dr. Phil? Okay. okay. Uh, Roba Gray, uh, China doesn't have a drug problem because they're too busy exporting all their fentanyl here. Oh, that's a fact. Yeah, that's for sure. Can we get, you know, as wide open as the border is, and there's so little done to identify who's here, something that's kind of flown <laughs> below the radar, no pun intended, was uh, you're going to need a real ID <clears throat> starting in May of next year. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. No. So that's cool. A national ID coming. Um, oh, that's good. So in other words, the government, our government, will do everything they can to identify us and track us. Yeah. But illegals, not so much. So I don't know. I mean, crazy. Is Texas? Cause remember, there was a time when Texas wasn't. Uh, there were several states that weren't on board with that, and I. That's going to be a mess uh, as we get closer to to next May. So anyway, yeah, we should go. delve into that mm-hmm. uh, in a future episode here. Uh, John Fetterman. Continuing to sound a little bit more reasonable, Mm -hmm. but continuing to vote (laughs) unreasonably. 95% progressive score is what he has. 95%. He's got an A from the progressive caucus or whatever. 
Um, you know, so he's making more sense with what he's saying to reporters, but it's not reflected in his votes. And he was just on, he was just on Bill Maher. Uh, oh, and there he is. Um, looking good. Looking close your legs, good. man. You know, <laughs> we all like to be comfortable, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! My wife will tell you that the first thing I do when I get home from church is race to the closet to change my clothes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but what is the deal with this guy in the United States Senate? I don't know. Maybe a collared shirt. Some khakis, if you can't wear a suit. Oh, you are judgy. And for national TV appearances, could you not just put on a t-shirt and jeans, <laughs> at least for the interview? No, he can't. Never look at that. And man- Always basketball shorts <laughs> and a hoodie. And man spreading. That. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> I don't get that part of him at all. Yeah, we all. I'd love to lounge around in my jammies. While I'm on the air. But, you know, there's just some things that aren't quite acceptable. And that's one of them. (laughs) He just does not care. He doesn't care. (laughs) At all. So he's good for a a really snappy quote. Yes. But not... uh, But not a snappy vote. Not a snappy vote. Good quote, no vote. (laughs) Yes! That's what's going on with John Fetterman right now. John Fetterman. Great quotes, bad votes. Mm, Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, and let's see, he was elected elected in, was it 22? No, 20, uh, oh yeah, 22, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, 22, so we've got until 28 before he's up for re-election. So maybe he'll change, maybe eventually he'll he'll vote a little more, I don't know, conservatively, I doubt it, but mm. we'll see. Uh, something to keep an eye on. He has been great on Israel, though. Yeah. I will say that, I, I do appreciate that, uh, because a lot... A lot of the Democrats just aren't. So, you know, we take that wherever we can get it. Uh, Let's see. The United Nations. Maybe a lost cause, but the uh, European Parliament election was held over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Far right politicians were elected. (laughs) That's how this is getting reported. Yeah. Far Uh right politicians. Uh So they want you to believe these are extremists along the lines of I don't know, far-right Americans somehow. Mm-hmm. Italy's Prime Minister, uh, Giorgia Maloney, was a big winner. Yeah. France's Emmanuel Macron was a big loser. And yeah, not just because he had to clean up Joe Biden all weekend. <laughs> Socialists and uh, Green Party lost big. Conservatives fared really well over the weekend. Yeah, a lot of people pointing out that, look, uh, I guess if I'm against uh, <laughs> children changing their sex or... Illegals coming in here and mm. destroying our countries. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if if not wanting the third world imported into Western Europe, if uh, if us, you know, having religious values or wanting sovereignty, if all that sovereign- makes me a bad person, then I, so I, be I guess it. I'm a crazy right winger. If those are crazy right wing policies, so right. Right. there you go. That's the extreme right wing winning in Europe this weekend. Interesting. Yeah. So it is interesting. It's going to be fun to see how this uh, plays out for Europe because a case could be made that they are uh, becoming much more conservative than the United States of America based on just leadership yeah. alone. And, yeah. and, and one of the issues was, I mean, we're not the only ones dealing with uh, ridiculous uh, illegal immigration. I saw this fun fact. Germany naturalized over 200,000 immigrants. So they naturalized 200,000 immigrants in 2023. 75,500 of them are from Syria, which, I mean, when you think oh, that's Germany, work out really you well. think Syria. It's yeah, the same, yeah, yeah. same thing. Same values, same culture, yes. same language, all of those things, yeah. right? Yeah. Same thing. So they'll melt right in. Melt, melt right <laughs> in. Yep. That's just your typical melting pot that <laughs> is Germany. Uh, yeah. and, and <laughs> <laughs> Which they've always been. Sure. Am I right? Sure. Uh, well, one fun thing here is, you know, we were so excited to have uh, Javier Millet uh, win in Argentina. And mm-hmm. you remember one of the greatest videos was when he was getting rid of all those uh, departments 
You know, remember all the uh, fun bureaucratic offices? Yes. Well, the uh, Ministry of Women, Genders, and Diversity has been fully closed down now, just a few months into his term. No, really? Javier. Yeah, he got Good rid of that uh, Ministry of Women, Genders, and Diversity. How is the nation of Argentina going to exist without that? <laughs> well, you can't. You can't. Every major, every major country on this planet needs the ministry of women, of women genders, genders, and, and diversity. diversity. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, that, that right there is the Biden administration. It is yeah. the ministry of For women, sure. genders, and diversity. No question. You know, I was, I was watching uh, another documentary. This will surprise some. I was watching a documentary over the weekend. Where are you now? Uh, I was. It's called <laughs> Hitler and the Nazis. Have oh, you boy. seen that? <laughs> really excellent documentary. It's okay. got all kinds of actual footage. Oh, is that the one that keeps the popping time. up on Netflix? Yeah. Okay. And it popped up so many times, I'm like, okay. All right, I'll click on the mustache, you man. You got me. You got me. Okay. I'm going to do it. Uh, so it's it's actual footage mixed in there with some recreations, and they spend some time talking about the Nuremberg trials. But what it shows you is how everything began in Germany. Uh, the rise of Hitler, how he came to power. And the fact that, you know, people were not where they eventually wound up on Jews. I mean, it took some time mm -hmm. and uh, it took some propaganda, but it shows the path that, frankly, we're on right now. Mm. And it's chilling to me. I, how can we be so short-sighted as to follow that path again? To see all of the warning signs that were going on in Germany in the 20s and 30s happening here and completely ignore them. Oh, yeah, okay, we got anti-Semitism on, on college campuses and in our streets. And, yeah, sure, they're calling for the extermination of Jews, but, ah, that's just a few people. This is how it starts. Mm -hmm. This is how it spreads. Yeah, I mean, and uh, aside from <sighs> that very important factor of the rise of Hitler and Nazis. Uh, you didn't even mention uh, our economies and uh, hyperinflation right around exactly. the corner. Because right. we are... Right. It, it, yeah. it's... And we've talked about this before, mm -hmm. but in the Weimar Republic in, I think it was 1923, things were so bad that by the time pe people started getting their paycheck every day, because it, it, had to be, it had to be that way, because by the afternoon... Prices had increased so much that their entire paycheck couldn't buy a loaf of bread. So they'd get their check, which would be, you know, $20 trillion. And they'd run out and they'd get a loaf of bread with it in the morning. If they waited till the afternoon, sorry, the loaf of bread is now $40 trillion. You can't afford it. I mean, that's, that, that's also a trajectory that we're on right now. Congratulations. I mean, that's that kind of hyperinflation is not immediately going to happen to us, but we're setting all of the precedent for it. Okay, listen to this nugget from Marketplace.org. This is an article. Uh, let's see. And th Okay, this is from... This is a while. This is a couple months back. The average monthly payment on a new mortgage rose 46% in one year. From here, 14, yeah, in the United States of America. Oh my gosh, here we go. Okay, oh my gosh. Okay, so this stat is so I'm going to tell you what the average mortgage payment was in the United States at the end of 2021 mm -hmm. and then at the end of 2022. Fourteen hundred dollars, the end of 2021. The average mortgage payment, mm -hmm. all right. The mm -hmm. end of 2022, that was up to two thousand forty five dollars, almost double. Oh my gosh. I mean, well, in a about a, year? Yeah, let's see, 1400 not almost double. Sorry. Uh, 1400 to uh, 2045 So, oh. I mean, still up. Okay, still. Still up quite a bit. 46%. So, what, $600? 46%, as, as, Good the, gosh. as the article said, Keith. Uh, that's crazy. I mean, that, and that's just on the interest rate. That's, that's the ridiculousness of our interest rates right now. Yeah. So, I want to see this at the end of... Uh, 2023. So if you went from 1400 to 2045 from end of 2021 to 2022, what was it like a year after that? What is it like today? Because they're not going down. No, Bidenomics is going really, really well. You're doing so much better than you think you are. Well, I don't know why you can't listen to this man. He's trying to tell you that you're doing great. What was his quote? 
they've got the money. They're yeah. just mad that things are more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have plenty of money. And that's what they were telling people in the Weimar Republic. Look, you just got a paycheck that is $10 trillion. <laughs> yeah, uh, 4 trillion marks equaled one U.S. dollar. Four trillion was equal to a dollar. And uh, that's what happens when you just print money. That's what happens when you allow inflation to just spin out of control. So 2390. So we've gone from 1400 mm-hmm. monthly payment. This is before property taxes, insurance, stuff like that. So 1400 dollars a month at mm-hmm. the end of 2021. Today it's 2390. Oh my gosh. That is crazy. Uh, what do you tell your kids Nuts. that are starting out in the world right now? It's like, mm, good luck being a renter, maybe? Yeah. I, Sometimes you don't have to tell them anything because they're experiencing it right now and, as they're looking for a place to right. live. And don't repurpose their rooms. <clears throat> they right, they're going to re- be right, right back, back in. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is, <laughs> this is yep. Biden's America. Sure is. Closer to home, uh, four Russian warships, including a nuclear-powered submarine, We'll arrive in Havana next week. Oh, that is pretty close to home. Uh, They cited, uh, Cuban officials cited historically friendly relations between both nations. And as tensions uh, escalate over Western military support for Ukraine in its war with Russia. Cuba's foreign ministry said in a news release that the ships will be in Havana between... June 12th and 17th, noting that none of them will carry any nuclear weapons and assuring their presence does not represent a threat to the region. So as soon as Wednesday. So that's fine. Okay, good. Yeah, that's good. And I saw where, um, you know, we've we've talked about the influence Russia and China are having over in Africa. (laughs) Uh, Niger, the country of Niger, wants Russia to place a full-fledged military base on its territory. Cool. Holy cow. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, in Niger, isn't that the country where they just took over our $120 million facility or whatever? Boy, and we just left. I, yeah. And left it to the Russians. Yeah. Okay, see ya. Enjoy it. And, and don't forget this quote from last week from Vladimir Putin. Quote, NATO countries, especially the smaller European states, must realize what kind of game they're playing. Mm-hmm. Does the West want Jeez. a global conflict? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. But don't worry because... Oh, thank you. Uh, Lindsey Graham. Mm-hmm. Lindsey Graham. Yeah. He he told us why we're actually in Ukraine. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's hear it from Lindsey then, because I'm sure this will make us all feel better. Uh, what did Trump do to get the weapons flowing? He created a loan system. They're sitting on 10 to $12 trillion of critical minerals in, in Ukraine. <clears throat> they could be the richest country in all of Europe. I don't want to give that money and those assets to Putin to share with China. If we help want. Ukraine now, they can mm-hmm. become the best business partner we oh, ever dreamed of. This guy. That 10 to $12 trillion of critical mineral assets could be yeah. used by Ukraine and the West, not given to Putin and China. Mm-hmm. This is a mm-hmm. very big deal how Ukraine ends. Mm -hmm. Let's help them win a war we can't afford to lose. Let's find a solution to this war. But they're sitting on a gold mine to give Putin 10 or 12 trillion dollars of critical minerals that he will share with uh, China is ridiculous. (laughs) That's great. They're looking for a new angle now uh, to sell this to the American people. No, see, we really have interest in Ukraine because uh, once we help them, they're going to give us all our rare minerals that we need. Yeah, so your kid is going to go die in Ukraine for rare earth minerals. Mm-hmm. Hope you're ready for them. I mean, that guy's not mm-hmm. going to have kids. But he doesn't care. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, uh, this is, you're I mean, saying this because is, he's so old now that it's unlikely that he'll uh, start a family. Is that what you're saying? That's what you meant by that? Okay. That's what I'm yeah. saying. That's what I thought. I'm totally saying. I mean, Lindsey Graham, I, I mean, right. <laughs> too old to be a dad. And totally right. not into that. So even huh, if he finds the right, right gal, gal, like right away, right, right now, right uh-huh, now, I, uh-huh. I just don't <laughs> see him starting pro- a family, procreating. Yeah, I see. So hold on, uh, this is a war for oil now. This is a war for rare earth minerals. That's all it is. Just change out oil for minerals. Yep, yep. And they're losing so much support with the American people. Now they're trying to make it like, oh, this is really in the interest sure. of, yep. of the United States of America. These people, is what? it? 
is it? They love war. Man, that man, guy is the man, tip oh of the man. spear yep. of love and war. All right. Do you remember eating cereal as a kid? Do you remember sitting down to enjoy all of the fun colors and flavors in your cereal bowl? Well, now that you're an adult, cereal just isn't the same, is it? It's bland, it's boring, and it just doesn't taste great. Well, Magic Spoon has reinvented your favorite childhood cereals to taste great, but each serving contains zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and four to five grams of net carbs per serving. I don't know how they do it, but it's delicious. That's why they call it Magic Spoon. It's almost like magic. High protein, gluten-free, grain-free, and soy-free way to relive those moments, watching your favorite cartoons, eating the best cereal in the world. Uh, It's chewy. It's delicious. I mean, treats that now come in four flavors. Um, These are really good. The, the, uh, The snacks that you can also get in addition to the cereal, fantastic. Just like the marshmallow treats that you had as a kid, but with only one gram of sugar and two grams of net carbs. And they're packed with 11 to 12 grams of protein per bar. So head to magicspoon.com slash unleashed and get a custom bundle of cereal and try the Magic Spoon for yourself. Don't forget to add their tasty treats to your order too. Be sure to use our promo code unleashed at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that... They back it with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of high-protein cereal at magicspoon.com. This is the cereal that grew up with you. magicspoon.com slash unleashed. Use the promo code unleashed and save $5 off. Pat Gray Unleashed. We'll be right back after this. Tweets here, abnormal tweets. My wages identify as tips. Yeah. Oh, well, then I guess none of them should be taxed, right? <laughs> Conservatarians uh, tweets, good quotes, bad votes, applies to so much of Congress, but Senator Kennedy leaps to mind. <laughs> I was thinking of Yeah, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, nuclear barf, Germany didn't fall overnight, neither will we. Takes time to destroy a comf- uh, country from the inside. Mm-hmm. Two tier giblets. I didn't see the documentary, Hitler and the Nazis. However, I did see the remake, Joe and the Dems. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sadly, yeah, we are seeing that right now. Psyop plant, monkeys will fly out my butt before Lindsey Graham finds the right gal. <laughs> I wonder why. Could be. I don't why? know why. Why is I, it I, such a struggle for him? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. What is he, 70 though? Oh, okay. How you old know. is Lindsay, right? So, yeah. It's been... Not a swinging bachelor anymore. No. Mm-mm. Let's see how old he is. 68. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. He's a young feller. <laughs> uh, it's still, there's still time. Still time. It's still time. So we'll see. Keep hope alive, Lindsay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all we are saying is give a gal a chance. That's all we're saying. <clears throat> Got some good news here. A judge has expunged the misdemeanor convictions of that St. Louis couple yeah who wave guns at the racial injustice protesters you know at the uh the blm protesters outside their mansion in 2020 remember that yep now they want their guns back good attorneys mark and patricia mccloskey filed a request in january to have the convictions wiped away judge joseph p white wrote in an order Wednesday that the purpose of an expungement is to give people who have been rehabilit who have rehabilitated themselves a second chance <clears throat> so it's been expunged. So that's not really saying that they didn't do anything wrong. He's saying, yeah, we're going to give them a second chance. So now the couple wants their guns back, and they should get them back. It's amazing they still haven't had that happen. Yeah, well, Incredible. as soon as that went through, uh, Mr. McCloskey was like, let's go, city. Give us our guns. So yeah, we'll see. Mm-hmm. They've uh, probably been melted down by now. Yeah, I wouldn't hold your breath. Uh, Speaking of guns, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer was being interviewed on CNN, and an interesting question came up. 
when this happened Uh (laughs) to the broadcast. I want to turn to uh, a different, very different trial, and that is one that is going on in Delaware with the president's son, Hunter Biden. He is on trial for mm-hmm. obtaining and possessing a firearm while under the influence She's of nodding. illegal drugs, she hears which her. was against the law. And now, Republican Lindsey Graham mm-hmm. says that an average American would not have been prosecuted Dana, for this. Yeah. Yes, Governor, can you hear me? <laughs> okay, it sounds like the governor can't hear me. You know what? We're going to take a very oh shoot, quick oh boy, break. oh wow! But you'll come right back and, and ask the question fixed, again, and we'll be right? right back. Oh Don't no! Go oh. <laughs> Smoking crack and drinking vodka exclusively. <laughs> I mean, she was nodding her head the whole time, yeah. Yeah. hearing every word she said. Then all of a sudden, shoot, Dana, can, can you uh, can you hear me? Because I I completely lost the connection. And I really want to answer this question because oh, it sounded man. like it was going to be a really good one. Yeah, but you dropped off. Sounds like a riveting question that I just want to sink my teeth into, <laughs> but I can't hear you. Shoot, darn it. <laughs> oh, she is the worst. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Has she had she faced election? She did, didn't she? Yeah. Since 2020? Yeah. And was reelected. Yeah. Oh, God. What is wrong with Come people? Come on, Michigan. What is the matter with people? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Happens all over the country, though. It's not I just know. Michigan. I know. It's for sure. You get a chance in the Yeah. Uh, in, in, well, I was gonna say in the primaries uh, on the right. You know, and mm-hmm. time after time, time after time, they continue to elect the incumbent rhinos. In this case, <sighs> Michigan said, "Nah, we're good with this uh, uh, overbearing Democrat uh, uh-huh. from the uh, took co- away our, COVID era. Took away all of our rights. We couldn't even go to our homes on the beach. Now she could. She could. And, and her she husband did. could. Yeah, but she had important things to do. Mm-hmm. You know, the so, beach house. Completely on. Got to get to that beach house. Right." Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. More Pat Gray Unleashed coming up. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. to uh, London Roberts. You know who she is? She's the baby mama of Hunter Biden's love child in Arkansas. Uh, Apparently, Joe Biden, to this day, has never met or even contacted his granddaughter, Navy. Still, still, he's such a loving grandfather. Man, does he love his grandkids. Mm -hmm. My granddaughter lives in... In, lives in Pennsylvania. In, okay. In sure. Philadelphia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One granddaughter lives in lives New in York. New York. Okay. One granddaughter One lives, lives in Washington. In Washington. One granddaughter right. lives in Wilmington, Delaware. Wilmington, Delaware. And the and other grandsons, uh, my, uh, my grandson, grandson lives in lives California. In California. So okay. I left somebody out, didn't I? You sure anyway. did. You sure did. Philadelphia, purpose, Wilmington, mm-hmm. and... and I did say five. You're right. Yeah, you said five, but there's actually six. One Um, in New York. Arkansas. One in 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 Philadelphia. Okay, now get to the Arkansas. No, three. I got one granddaughter. Little girl in Arkansas. I don't know. No, you don't know, do you? You're confusing me, but they're all around. And they're 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 my oldest granddaughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and the oldest, we don't want to hear from him anymore. Uh, (laughs) Just sad. It's just sad, isn't it? You know, this loving, wonderful father and grandfather, they mean everything to him. Well, not that one. Not the one we're embarrassed by in Arkansas. We don't even talk to her. And do you know that uh, she, not only that, not only Joe, Hunter has never met his. Oh my goodness. His daughter in person. Never seen her in person. Unreal. It's a good family though. Oh, you kidding me? They are the quintessential loving family. Yeah. They really, really are. All right, 888 thirty three ninety three. We're in the midst of the NBA uh, championship series right now. Yeah. Boston Celtics, Dallas Mavericks. Uh, Boston Celtics head coach Joe Mazzella was asked a question at a press conference. Uh, here's what he had to say. 
Hey, Joe, uh, Ben School with Yahoo Sports. For the first time since 1975, this is the NBA Finals where you have two black head coaches. Uh, given the plight sometimes of black head coaches in the NBA, do you think this is a significant moment? Do you take pride in this? How do you view this or do you not see it at all? I wonder how many of those have been Christian coaches. Wait, what? <laughs> David Aldridge? Oh. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That was interesting. Yeah, it was. Wow, that shut the thing down, yeah. didn't it? <laughs> Jeez. Wow, that was awesome. That is great. Like the guy. I wonder how many I'm, of those have been Christian. I don't mind so much that the Celtics are up 2 nothing now. <laughs> Next <Good>. question. <laughs> Good so, stuff. last season, the uh, Texas Rangers, located here in Dallas, well, Arlington, uh, won the World Series. And this year, it's still possible for the Dallas Mavericks to win the NBA championship. <laughs> it's like championship city right now. If you didn't have the Cowboys dragging us down. Right. Dallas Stars made it to the Western Conference Finals. Oh, that's right! They lost. And they lost, but but they made it there. Mm-hmm. After 41 seasons as the host of Wheel of oh. Fortune. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We don't get this thing out enough here. Pat Sajak retired on Friday. Sad, isn't it? Yeah, Sajak, it is. Is, he's got to be about 70 now, right? Oh, he's 70-something. Oh, he's in his 70s. Yeah. And Vanna is like 65 or something. Um, so they're getting up there. Now, she's sticking around with Ryan Seacrest, right? I think so, yeah. Uh, he's 77. 77? Wow, he looks good for Yeah, 77. he does. Yeah, he's held up well. Uh, but here was his sign-off. Say goodbye. I have a few thanks and acknowledgments before I go. And I want to start with all of you watching out there. Pause it it's for a second. Incre- Look at this guy. 77 years old. He'll be 78 in October. Oh, that's incredible. It's halfway there. Come on, he's almost as old as Biden. Tell me you can't see the difference. <laughs> Jeez. All right, go ahead. Uh oh. Here. What happened? Rewind it. Rewind it a little bit there, Joe. Year. Rewind it, please. Yeah. We don't want to miss all of you word. watching out there. Mm-hmm. It's been an incredible privilege to be invited into millions of homes, night after night, year after year. Mm -hmm. decade after decade and I've always felt that the privilege came with a responsibility to keep this daily half hour a safe place for family fun no social issues no politics nothing embarrassing I hope nice just a game yep but gradually it became more than that a place where kids learn their letters where people from other countries hone their English skills (laughs) where families came together along with friends and neighbors and entire generations Hmm. what an honor to have played even a small part in all that Thank you for allowing me into your lives. Wow. That's nice. That's really nice. It's also really nice that he avoided the politics and the garbage uh, all the time. <laughs> he saved that for Twitter. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah. He's a good guy. Really good. Speaking of which, uh, another really fun video to share with you. Uh, I, lo- I love this. Um, there's a uh, Trump comedian who... <laughs> Went off on the conviction of Donald Trump. But I think whether you're a Trump fan or not a Trump fan, I mean, you can't get mad at this, right? Check this out. Found guilty of 34 felonies, right? Don't worry, he'll twist it, man. He'll make it fun. He'll make it cool. It's fine. It's fine. 34 counts. Nobody's done it. Nobody can do that. (laughs) Nobody can do it. 34. It's never been done. Our numbers are so big. These are big numbers. 34. <laughs> El Chapo couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. 22 times. What a failure. <laughs> Guilty on 22 counts. I said, what an amateur. 34. No, we couldn't win. Al Capone couldn't do it. <laughs> 27 counts, which is really beginner stuff. That's beginner stuff. I couldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. The, the Zodiac Killer. Can you believe this? Nine counts. I go, this is it. What is this amateur at or nine counts? The Zodiac. I call him the Zodiac Loser. That's what I call That's what I call We are going to jail, and we are going to jail so quick and so strong, and nobody's going this quick. Two days. We'll be there in two days. We're making felonies great again. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Oh. 
TylerFisher.com. I'll be out in the yard, right? The junior. <laughs> Catch me outside. I'll be out in the yard. Shackles, these are going to be great shackles. Golden, we're going to get the golden shackles. <laughs> this ain't Trump's yard, right there. Trump's yard. Brilliant. Absolute genius. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's comedy gold right there. What's his name, Tyler? Tyler Fisher. Tyler Fisher. Uh, with the S-C-H-E-R. TylerFisher.com. Uh, he's coming to a lot of cities. So like good. There. Yeah. He had the arms down, you know, when he's standing there. Yeah, the, just like Trump. The posture. Yep. <laughs> so I'm so pissed that we didn't think, think of that first. Make felonies great again. So great. <laughs> really, really nicely done. Uh, so thanks for that. Now, somebody who's envious uh, and wants to be a felon. <laughs> and I say we accommodate him. Yes! Let's bring him up on charges of... Uh, Anything. Foreign influence. Yeah. Um, Joe Biden mm -hmm. tried to be a hero. Here's the times where he's claimed to have been arrested. What was that like, uh, walking into the great Senate chamber at 29 years old? You know, I walked in when I was 21, and I got arrested. And they just got out of session. I walked no, no, in the back. You didn't. All of a sudden, I found myself in the chamber, and I was stunned. I walked up, sat down in the presiding officer's seat. Guy grabbed me by the shoulder, said, you're under arrest. I came what? back. I came back from South Africa trying to see Nelson Mandela and getting arrested for trying to getting see him arrested. on Robbins Island. He was in prison. I had the great <laughs> honor of meeting him. I had the great yeah. honor of being arrested with our UN ambassador Wait, on the streets what? of Soweto trying to get to see him on Robbins Island. Your campaign no. has come out since and said, no, no, no. You were separated from other people at the airport, but you did say arrest three yeah. times. What? Why? I said Why? arrested. I Again, I was, not able to, I was not able to move. Cops, what? Alfred Connors, would not let me go with them, made me stay where I was. I guess I, I wasn't arrested. Um, making you stay where you are <laughs> and being arrested yeah. are not the same thing. Why would you confuse the two? <laughs> Why didn't you say, uh, they made me stay where I was instead of, and I got arrested? <laughs> Bizarre. All right. Finishes. I was. I guess mm. I, I wasn't arrested. I was stopped. I did not live the struggles of Douglas, Unreal. Tubman, King, mm -hmm. Lewis, right. Goodman, Cheney, Swerner, mm -hmm. countless others, known and unknown. I did not walk in the shoes of generations of students who no. walked these grounds. No, you didn't. But I walked other grounds. <laughs> yeah. They think I'm kidding, man. Oh, gosh. What? Seems like yesterday, the first time I got arrested. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, I'm lying again, so I can't go into that. Uh, and I don't want to be fact-checked on it again. <laughs> it's just so weird. It is so weird, the stuff he lies about. I guess he thinks it's really hip. It's really cool <sighs> that he's been arrested doing certain things. You know, arrested for Nelson Mandela mm -hmm. in South Africa. That's a good thing. Yeah. Arrested for, you know, civil rights marching here in this country. None of it happened, though. None of it happened. He continues to lie about absolutely everything. Also, uh, last week, Chiefs player B.J. Thompson Yeah, we talked a seizure. about this. Yeah, during practice. Yeah. Uh, kicker Harrison Butker yeah. saw B.J. Thompson having a seizure and heart attack. Dude, is that a heart attack, too? Isn't that something that, yeah. That, and, and, yeah, a guy that should be in pretty good shape, right? Yeah. You would think. Mm. Had a seizure and a heart attack. Ran to the training room and got the trainer saving his life. So Harrison Butker, so. the uh, the guy that everyone piled on for, you know, mm -hmm. endorsing traditional mm -hmm. marriage or you know, family roles or whatever. Right now, he's a hero. He saved B.J. Thompson's life. Jeez. That's good. You see, Incredible. Darren Waller had this weird medical thing where he had some shortness of breath or something last year. He's retiring now. Uh, the Giants. Oh uh, wow! Do uh, we know what's wrong with him? Uh, I didn't see what was, but he calls it a near-death experience. Darren, wow, Darren Waller. Wow. Uh, so he's retiring. Mm. Um, did we? Did anybody follow NASCAR stuff? I don't know. There was some sort of medical event at Watkins Glen. Mm. Uh, I don't know. There was some race or something. I just I, the, the details are so scant that apparently somebody had a uh, a medical event. One of the drivers or yeah, somebody in yeah, the crowd. Yeah, I think so. And and mm. and he's uh, he died. 
Oh wow! Yeah, so I, I don't I don't know any Weird. details on that whatsoever, but I will say that the Ninth Circuit Court has said that the uh, mRNA shots um, have been strict uh, have been uh, had their liability protection lifted, according to because here's what they said hmm. that it's not a vaccine if the claim right. isn't to prevent the spread. Right, so if, yeah. if it's no longer yeah. preventing the spread, then it's no longer a Which vaccine. Which it never did in the first place. Right, so mm-hmm. they're saying then you get no liability pr- protection if it's just to reduce symptoms. So now it doesn't fall under the vaccine protection. So that's going to be worth seeing. Isn't that interesting? Hmm, okay. And the last thing I will say on the uh, whole vaccine, mRNA, whatever front, is uh, I saw Dr. Peter McCullough saying that um, <clears throat> that uh, that the the... The bird flu thing, mm-hmm. that the PCR tests um, of animals is uh, is apparently now, that's going to become a thing as they attempt to get these false positives so that they can say how bad the bird flu is now. Look at all these positive tests of bird flu. It's because there's now going to be mass testing of PCR testing underway. So that's not Good. going anywhere anytime soon. The okay. whole bird flu hysteria. Yeah. Well, they haven't begun to ratchet that up yet. But they will. Closer to the election. <clears throat> they will, yes. <laughs> Very close to the election. Then we're going to have to have drop boxes and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Mail in. You don't want the bird flu, do you? Oh, jeez. Uh, the Sunday New York Times included a full-page ad from actor John Leguizamo. That's usually a really good sign of something really, really fun. He used the space <laughs> to present an open letter aimed at, uh, at Emmy voters, hmm. asking them to choose and promote Emmy candidates of color. Okay, Leguizano (laughs) shared the letter in a tweet and wrote, America is better when it is inclusive. It is more profitable. It is more creative. Let's not give up. I'm still woke. Are you? (laughs) (laughs) What a loser. What a comment. I'm still woke. Are you? His tweet began, I know everyone is exhausted about inclusion but not us who are included who are not included so that's why i took this ad out in the new york times white people (laughs) he says white peoples oh not that word are only 58.9 percent of the population that's not i don't think that's accurate should look that up let's see he's around 70 percent 58.9% 58.9% of the population, but overrepresented in uh, top positions across the board. They are the decision makers in tech, banking, corporations, medicine, and streamers, and Hollywood. Hmm. Please let this be the year we finally embrace change, Leguizamo's letter began. The year we truly find equity and see artists of color represented across not just one category, but all categories. What year is this written? 1970? I know. And yeah, um, he's right. Um, the white he population, is right. 59 point whatever it was. Yeah. 58.9%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, that's a lot less than it used to be, that's for sure. But I guess that's, that's a good thing because we're... Is it more diverse now? Yeah, it's much At least the border is wide open. I wonder if right. that had anything to do I with it. I wonder if it does. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> Nah. I'm sure not. No. Nah, it has nothing to do with it. I'm still woke. Are you? Crazy. What, what grown man writes those words? It's pathetic. It's pathetic. That you have to, you know, beg and plead, please notice me. Notice me. You will be noticed. If your work is good, it's going to be noticed. He did that uh, little squirrel thing at the end of Ice Age, right? Isn't that him? John Leguizamo? I don't know. Right? I don't know. Is it? Might be. That's uh, some fine work right there, though. It was. It was good stuff. If it is him. Right, am I, am I wrong? <laughs> no, you're, I think you're right. Ice Age. That sounds right. He's a sloth. He's a sloth, sloth. in Ice Age. I knew it okay. was Ice Age something, right? <laughs> Sorry. Scrat is Chris Wedge, whoever that is. So shame on me. Mm-hmm. John Leguizamo was But he actually sloth. is in the movie, so you got that part right. I got there. I Kind of. Ish. Yeah, sort of. Got it. Uh, Are there grounds for a mistrial in the Trump conviction now? A comment was posted to Facebook a day before a jury convicted Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. Uh, In fact, on this Facebook post, this guy thanked the court for their service. Mm. 
He said, uh, my cousin is a juror (laughs) and says Trump is getting convicted. Thank you, folks, for all your hard work. The comment, according to Judge Murchon, uh, now labeled as one week old, uh, responded to a routine UCS notice posted on May 29th, 2024, regarding oral arguments in the fourth department of the appellate, blah, 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 (laughs) unrelated, unrelated to his this proceeding bull crap he was talking about the verdict jurors in the case deliberated deliberated for two days before reaching the verdict then how did people know the day before the jur- the the judgment was reached and announced this sounds like a ju- uh, grounds for a mistrial to mm-hmm. me uh, i doubt a mistrial will be declared but i mean there's been so many things here uh, and for them to actually admit that this Facebook post happened, uh, that's interesting. See if anything comes of that. Uh, but keep an eye on that. Yeah, the jurors are not supposed to be talking to their cousins about what kind of verdict they're reaching. That is not supposed to happen during deliberations. Also, the Secret Service agent who uh, was with Donald Trump when he supposedly dove into the front seat of the beast oh yeah and tried to grab the steering wheel from him on january 6th on january 6th and drive from the back seat to the capitol building (laughs) that was the story anyway and he wanted to immediately refute that ridiculous story and he was not allowed to uh they shut him down that's great House investigators obtained evidence showing that former President Donald Trump's Secret Service driver wanted to quickly refute testimony from Cassidy Hutchinson alleging a struggle in the presidential limousine during the Capitol riots, but the Democrat-led January 6th committee rebuffed him for months. The evidence was confirmed to Just the News by both uh, Barry Loudermilk and the chairman of the House subcommittee that's investigating January 6th, now for Republicans, and a transcript of the driver's interview that was conducted months after he first offered to testify. Loudermilk uh, on Tuesday said the delay by the Democrat-led January 6th committee, saying it kept Americans in the dark for months ahead of the 2022 midterm elections, that there was firsthand testimony refuting that stupid hearsay narrative that Trump tried to violently commandeer his Secret Service limo. On January sixth, how many how many lies about this guy yeah. have to be refuted before people understand that you know this is just character assassination, start to finish? You got this ridiculous story. You have the insane story uh, from a couple of years ago on D Day when he supposedly called uh, the veterans who were buried uh, on in French soil what losers, suckers, suckers and losers. And losers. And that was disproven by people who were actually there. And by the way, people who don't like him much and haven't de- defended him on much of anything else said, yeah, that no, that didn't happen. John Bolton in particular. Yeah. 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 Uh, and so the lies just continue to pile up. Um, but we'll see if it makes any difference <clears throat> by the time November rolls around. Meanwhile, for years, Joe Biden shared a bookkeeper with his son, Hunter. He also shared a personal lawyer with his brother, Jim. Hmm. And when Jim Biden wanted to know more about one of Hunter Biden's associates, he hired the former head of Joe Biden's Secret Service detail to investigate. Since 2019, Joe Biden has repeatedly distanced himself from his family's uh, business dealings, saying that he's never so much as discussed them with his relatives or anyone else. Yeah, why would you? It's why would like you? It's your son and... Brother right. and right. Why would you ever? Talk? Why would you have anything got to do plenty with any of other it? stuff they could talk about than house mm-hmm. business? Uh, however, uh, there's a great chart we should maybe uh, maybe post this because there's this uh, chart that shows the relationship status between Joe Biden, Jim Biden, Hunter Biden, and all of the connecting business associates that they had, like Eric Schwerin, who is Joe Biden's personal bookkeeper during his vice presidency, at a time when Schwerin was also Hunter Biden's business partner and personal bookkeeper. Then there's Mel Monzak, personal attorney for both Joe and Jim Biden. 
There is Fran Person, who was Joe Biden's body man, then after going into work with a Chinese real estate developer, sought to do business with Hunter Biden and offered him the developer's personal largesse. Uh, There's White House physician Kevin O'Connor, who was also Joe Biden's doctor as vice president, who pursued a potential health care deal alongside Jim Biden in 2017. Uh, Dale Papio oversaw Joe Biden's Secret Service detail during his vice presidency, then worked as a private investigator for Jim Biden. But there was no connection there between Joe Biden and Hunter and Jim Biden's business dealings. Mm. Completely separate. Is there a chart that shows the connection between Halle Biden and Bo Biden and Hunter Biden? You got a chart like that? No. No. We should make one if there isn't one. It's like a straight line. Need to, yeah, need to come up with a. Okay. I bet you could do it so in just the few seconds we have left. Here's Hallie. Right? Okay. Yeah, right. Hallie Biden. And then here's Bo over here. All right. And oh wait, here's Hunter too. Yeah. All right. So you got a connection like, there's between. There's like a commonality right there. Interesting. Huh. Weird. All right. We'll see you on overtime. What a weird family. And then right back here tomorrow. This is Pat Gray, Unleashed.